Well, uh, are we prepared for this in this country? What are you prepared for as it relates to your faith in Jesus Christ and increasing times of trouble? We're going to explore all this now with Pastor Carl Gallops. He's pastor of Hickory Hammock Baptist Church in Florida. He's a former police officer. He comments for WorldNet Daily news site. And he's author of the book, Be Thou Prepared, Equipping the Church for Persecution and Times of Trouble. It's WND Books. Carl Gallops joins us now. Pastor Gallops, thanks for being with us today. Hey, Bob, thank you for having me, and thanks for having me back. God bless you. Oh, thank you. You too. I know in my introduction and setup here, some people feel like it's maybe a little bit of hyperbole and I'm being overly dramatic, but unless I'm missing something here, it seems to me that this is a real picture of what does exist in the world today. Uh, we are experiencing more persecution in this country, but we need to know, you look around the rest of the world, there is some pretty major persecution, and we can't think that it's never going to bleed its way into this country uh, with that kind of severity. Yeah, Bob, not only is what you said uh, not hyperbole, but it was understated. In fact, it was a brilliant assessment of, of, of what's happening. And, and Christian persecution is brutal and barbaric around the world. And as a matter of fact, in my book, I document several, several re very reliable sources, some right out of the mainstream media, that documents that Christian persecution is at an all-time high since the time of Jesus Christ himself. And that would include even the Roman uh, emperor uh, persecution days. And all of this, again, is heavily documented in my book. So, so we're living in some tumultuous times as far as Christian persecution around the world goes. And, of course, as you brilliantly analyzed, a lot of that, or some of that at least, is making its way to churches in America, to Christianity in America. And, and, and you know, I think the defining thing, and, and there's a balance to it all, and you did a perfect job of balancing it out, because in America, you know, gosh, are, are, are we being persecuted? Well, ask Kim Davis. Ask the flower yep. shop owner. Ask the baker. Ask the churches who have had people burst in with guns and, and massacre numbers of people claiming, you know, this is, this is your Columbine, Christians, Christian America. I mean, these kinds of things have happened. Ask the pastors in Houston where the Houston mayor demanded their sermons to be turned in or they would go to jail uh, because they were speaking against homosexuality, etc. So, yes, there is persecution of Christians in America. Yes, there is. And it's directed. It's targeted. Uh, it's, it's specific. Radical groups, uh, the radical homosexual agenda is, is a part of it, and, and other radical groups, radical Islam. And all of that's documented in my book. But the thing that separates us thus far, and there has been a little chink in this armor, Bob, but the thing that separates us thus far has been the fact that we don't have government-sponsored persecution or government-decreed persecution, as in North Korea, as in China, as in, you know, uh, the Middle East and various uh, Islamic nations. But the chink in the armor in my humble opinion, is this Supreme Court ruling in June of the gay marriage right. ruling. Because even the dissenting justices said, now these are not wild-eyed preachers and conspiracy theorists, these are the dissenting justices who said this ruling, and I'm going to paraphrase, but, but, but you're, you, you know what I'm saying is accurate, mm -hmm. and your right. listeners can go look it up. The dissenting justices said this ruling is going to open the door for direct attack, direct persecution upon churches and Christians in America. Because basically it's going to be now a government decree to demand that Christians reject or deny a specific foundational tenet of the Christian faith, and that is that marriage is between a man and a woman, marriage, home, family, womanhood, manhood, and childhood is defined by God's structure of the, of the marriage, a foundation, and we are now under government decree, being told, asked right now, but very soon to be told that we have to deny that, we mm -hmm. have to denounce that, we have to declare that the Bible is not the word of God in that regard, and and so, Kim Davis was targeted, Bob. She was used to send a warning shot across the bow of American Christianity and churches. In other words, they said, we're coming for you. We're coming for all of you. Because here's what I predict, and I don't claim to be a prophet, never have. I very seldom make these kinds of predictions. 
But I've been watching this movement for decades now, and everything I have predicted thus far has come to pass. And I'm going to predict this. The Kim Davis uh, debacle is designed to to bring further elimination of Christians from government service. In other words, it won't be long, Bob, and you will see government agencies, city, county, state, and federal, begin to require of their employees signing some kind of document affirming transvestitism, transsexual, uh, the LBGT agenda, and or the gay marriage. In other words, in other words, see, counties and cities don't want to be sued over this, and states don't want to. And so they saw what happened to Kim Davis, and so mark my words, it may not be long before your listeners who work for any governmental agency are going to be required to sign off on a statement that, for all intents and purposes, will mm-hmm. will call them to sign off on denying the foundational fundamental of the Word of God. Marriage was God's first institution, instituted in the first pages of Genesis. Right. And that's what this is all about, Bob. It's deeply spiritual. So, so Christian persecution is not government-sanctioned yet, but it kind of is now. And yeah. it's going to build, and even the dissenting justices predicted this. And I'll tell you what, Ogerfeld, this set the... Uh, framework really in place for government sanctioned persecution. And exactly. I think you're absolutely right. And so, Pastor, hang on just a moment. We'll pick it up from there in a couple of minutes. More with Carl Gallup's the book again, folks. Be thou prepared. It's WND Books. You're listening to the Bob Duco Show. Continuing our discussion with Pastor Carl Gallup's, he's author of the book Be Thou Prepared: Equipping the Church for Persecution in Times of Trouble. You know, Pastor, you were talking about uh, your prediction, if you will, about government workers, and I think you're absolutely right that suddenly. Uh, government jobs are going to be unfriendly jobs for Christians because anything from anything from uh, government officials to mayors to dog catchers to school teachers. You're right. I think the day is coming where they have to uh, sign affirmation statements, if you will, uh, gender identity, LGBT, you know, whatever, gay marriage, this type of thing, which is really a, a shame. And I, I'll tell you what I think is coming after that. I think private sector Christians are oh, going yeah. to face this as well. Beyond, and yeah. I'm not just talking about what, uh, what what the Kleins are experiencing and, and others, uh, Melissa and Aaron Klein and others. Uh, I'm talking about pastors, uh, authors, talk show hosts. Uh, I see the day coming when, uh, Carl, you're not allowed to write certain yeah. things in your book because that's going to be considered hate speech propaganda that incites, but it's going to be tantamount to yelling fire in a crowded crowded movie theater that it will not be protected by freedom of speech because it will, in fact, be inciting people to violence and creating a dangerous environment for people. Same thing with what I say over the airwaves, and ultimately I see this hitting pastors, probably pastors first because uh, pastors who refuse to marry gay couples I see discrimination lawsuits being brought against them. The church itself losing its tax exempt status. A first step, then the second step is they end up uh, being uh, being fined civilly by human rights commissions, which, which will financially bankrupt the church, and then ultimately possible criminal prosecution for discrimination. And at that point, I see it moving to authors and talk show hosts and and Christian ministries as well. So again, I know it sounds like hyperbole to some people, but that's kind of what my pardon the phrase crystal ball is showing. Yeah, no, no, Bob, you and I are on the exact same track with this. In fact, you have said words that I have said several times over the last uh, month or so, especially since the since the ruling in June, uh, but uh, even before that, predicting these things. And so, uh, I, I pray you and I are wrong. I pray that there's some kind of repentance uh, from our nation and a, and a changing, a turning around. I pray that perhaps. And I know politics is not the savior of our nation, but but God works through politics. All politics is is you know the way we govern ourselves. It's the affairs of men. God works through the affairs of men. Perhaps if we get some men and women in office who who see uh, the the coming destruction of our constitution and our rights, and to see the destruction of God's and they see the destruction of God's word in our culture, perhaps there will be a turning around. But if there's not, 
then the ominous words you just spoke and that I'm speaking, they will come to pass, and they will come to pass sooner than later. And I predict that it will, this government employee mandating of signing documents, I think that's going to come to the school system first. That's the most pervasive, it's the most massive government program in the world because the public schools is a branch, or they are a branch of uh, the federal government now. They, they truly are. And Common Core, what, what do you think that's about? I mean, you know, and it's, and it's going to go uh, throughout the nation. It's going to start with school teachers, and the Christian school teachers will bear the brunt of it. And I agree with you that there's a distinct possibility it will move from there eventually to the pulpit and to the airwaves. Listen, it's already that way in Canada. Oh, yeah. Our next door neighbor that's, that's, that's just like America, except for they're way more liberal. And, 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 and I've got, I've, listen, I do a lot of, I have to be very careful what I say here, but I do a lot of ministry and business in and around Canada as well. And I've got some dear friends and ministers that are in Canada. Um, I know that there is a, an organization that I um, have some speaking engagements lined up with um, to speak to the prophetic times in which we're living. And, and it happens to be uh, several conferences coming up in, in Canada. And I was speaking with one of the uh, production uh, organizers of, of one of these big conferences just the other day. And I said, you know, you're wanting me to speak to the prophetic times in which we live. One of them has to be the words of Jesus in Luke 17, speaking of this pervasive uh, Sodom and Gomorrah spirit of the last days. I right. said, am I going to be allowed to address that in Canada? And the answer was, no, you will not be allowed to address that. Yeah. You know what? It so, doesn't surprise so, me at all. It doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. It, the, I mean, can, uh, the Canadian uh, situation, it, I mean, you're right. You're absolutely right about it. I do speak in the... Uh, my show's broadcast out of Detroit, and so we're kind of on the Windsor border, and I do a, yeah. a fair amount of speaking engagements in Canada as well. And i got to tell you, I get warned to go on over there, too. People tell me, you know, be careful what you say. Be careful. You know, the C-250 law regarding homosexuality and uh, some things regarding Islam or, or other types of issues that you reference as well. And, and I get kind of the warnings, too. You know what? Be careful. Yeah. You can get yourself in legal yeah. trouble, and it's it's a shame, and it's coming here. Yeah, Bob, Bob, we take so much for granted. Can you, yeah. We're so blessed. We're so blessed in America. I mean, those blessings are quickly disappearing, and part of the judgment of God, I do believe, and, and our own stupidity. But can you imagine in America that we have to be told we go to the microphone? Now, be careful what you say. You could wind up in jail today. Be careful. Don't don't talk about homosexuality. Don't talk about Islam. Don't talk about gay marriage. Don't talk. And there's this list and litany of what you and I are said or told. Now, don't say that. Don't say that. And for your listeners, again, who are thinking hyperbole and, you know, we're being sensational, please remember, to the north of us, that's how they live in Canada. Right. right. So and, true. And, yeah. And so, and so the gay marriage ruling, uh, it has opened the way for all of this and more. And, I mean, this is, this is not rocket science. We're not building the space shuttle here. I predict it's going to come. I mean, it, how, how can it not come, Bob? How can it not come unless we repent and turn this thing around? But if we let it keep rolling forward, that is the agenda. I, I'm going to say something that may shock your, your, your audience, but I, I mean this from my heart. I, I've been a pastor for 30 years. I was a cop for 10 years before that. I'm a solid, conservative, evangelical, Bible-preaching, Jesus-loving, spirit-filled pastor. But I said... From the beginning, I said, you know, if this gay marriage ruling from the Supreme Court, if it was only about two men or two women wanting to live together and call themselves being married, I would not like it, but I could live with that. I mean, the government doesn't need to be looking in people's bedroom windows, neither does the church. Now they have to answer to God. And if they ask me what I think about it, I'm going to tell them, and I'm going to preach and teach. But if that's all this gay marriage ruling was about... I could hold my nose and live with it. But, Bob, it has never been about that. It is about an agenda to silence the church. This is deeply spiritual. It goes all the way to Ephesians 6, and that's where we are. Our battle's not against flesh and blood. This is the Sodom and Gomorrah spirit that Jesus mm -hmm. warned us of in yeah. Luke 17 and in Matthew 24. That's the right. days of Noah, the days of Lot. We, yeah, are, we here, are here. We are and here. And it's going to get worse. All right, Pastor, hang on this moment. We'll spend our last few minutes together next month with Pastor Gar Carl Gallup's The Book Again, folks. Be Thou Prepared. It's WND Books.